Awesome. Uh, well, both Chella and I would like to open and welcome folks. And I want to say hello to all of you, each and every one of you. Some of you I could see. I could see your names, your faces. Um, thank you for, for being present right here, right now, and joining this conversation in hopes to keep building together and building power, resilience, and community. Um, welcome to who are joining us. We are already recording, so it's okay if you want to keep your camera off or however you want to um, be in a space where we record the webinars that we hold on a weekly basis. Um, we can always adjust if somebody doesn't feel comfortable and they need us to pause the recording so that you could speak if that helps you participate more in yourself and more um, comfortably please um, let us know. We mostly have the space on mute until we unmute it. Um, I wasn't at last week's webinar, but Hamid let me know that it was quote unquote Zoom bombed. Uh, I have not experienced that, but it sounds like hateful kind of um, attacks. And so that's why we, we try to do our best to name this in the beginning and protect by having folks on mute to prevent any of that. We're also gonna do introductions with each person so that we know who's in the space and hope that we could build more trust and safety in that way. And folks, my name is Mariela. My pronouns are she and they, and I'm a co-founder of Stop the LAPD Spying Coalition. And I am uh, co-holding this space too with my dear comrade and friend, Chela Coleman, who also wants to welcome y'all to the space. Bienvenidos todos. Welcome everybody. Um, I, you know, I know that, you know, Tuesday is a heavy day and that every day has been heavy for a while. Um, so yes, uh, my name is Chella. My pronouns are she and they as well. I've been a member of Stop LAPD Spying since 2014, 13. Um, and um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to be in this space and, um, and hope the space and see what today's conversation will bring out. Um, um, so yeah. Um, thank you, Mariana. Thank you, Chela. Always an honor and a pleasure to share with you. I want to give folks a, a brief overview of what we're getting into today to get your consent and your mental preparation and your whole self. Um, we want to invite your whole self into this conversation. So after this welcome, I want to do a, a grounding with us just to settle a little bit more into our bodies and be more present with, um, with ourselves, with each other. It's not easy to do this work um, virtually and maybe this is not your first meeting in the day. It's, it's in the evening already. For some of you, it's later at night. And um, I just want to honor that it takes energy and a lot of work to be here. So thank you for everything that made it possible for you to join us. Um, the grounding, I wanted to center some self self love and invite if it feels good to have some contact with yourself and some breath work. That's what I want to offer for us and you can participate in that however you feel comfortable. In this space, uh, it, we, we, we are honoring our LGBTIQ family and we often will hold space because we need this space. We want to honor and uplift and remember the names of our folks who have, whose lives are being stolen. So we will be doing that. And I just wanna prep us um, for the name um, some, of, some of our folks whose lives, some of our trans folks whose lives have been stolen in this year and someone whose life was stolen in Los Angeles where our work is grounded um, in the month of March too. So I wanna name that, that we'll be naming folks and you're welcome to honor and name any other folks you wanna bring into the space. We're gonna have an intro question with us because it's important to build trust and space. 
uh, trust um, between us. I want to share it with you so you can start thinking about it as we do our grounding. How was your gender and or sexuality affirmed or uplifted today? And if you're not feeling that, the other part of the question is how was your gender and or sexuality attacked or surveilled today? So either, either of those experiences, they're welcome in the space and that's what's going to ground us in the conversation that we're having with Umi, Vera and Rumba joining us. We're gonna talk about um, some current laws and attacks on our communities, on trans youth, and our hope is to get informed together, share the collective wisdom that we have here in the space and build some power together, see, see whether this conversation can direct our organizing. My hopes is that this conversation tonight serves us all in some way and serves our movement and um, helps us get closer to the world we are trying to build now. So that's the course of um, this evening. Of course, it'll be open to dialogue after the panel and any other announcements, closing next steps are welcome at the end of the session. And we'll be here till we, we have up until eight if we end earlier, good night at that time. And um, if not, we'll be here till, till eight. And any time that we cross paths, it's also forever. So there's plenty of work on organizing to plug into beyond this moment. Any questions, um, edits, suggestions, anything that you might, uh, that might be coming up for you when you hear the agenda for my fellow panelists, folks, or co-facilitators, if there's anything I'm missing that you wanna add, please feel free. This is this is great. Um, this sounds great, and I love the the check in question because um, I was just also thinking that um, uh, I don't know. Is it okay to share now too? Uh, we'll get into the check in question right after the grounding, if that's still okay. I'm ex and we'll start it with Umi, if that's cool with you, because it's ready. I love it. Thank you, Umi. Cool. It sounds good. I don't hear any. Um, anyone opposed? I know you can't unmute maybe, um, but you, if you have access to the chat, folks, that's where I'm, I can also read you. Um, also, any emojis that are available to us to, through Zoom are welcome so we know you're present, you're listening, but please show up as, as you are. All right, y'all, Red Fauna, thanks for the thumbs up, Akil, I see you. Y'all wanna um, take some breaths together? Thank you, Farzana, I see you too. Cool. Um, if it feels comfortable for you to close your eyes, if that feels safe and good in your space, I will, I invite that. Um, if not, no worries. Some, If you can put your your eyes or settle, settle your eyes in some on the floor or wall or somewhere that's soothing for you, I, walk, I invite that too. I'm gonna close my eyes and be present with you. Also, if you wanna turn your camera off or on whenever you are in power in that too. I wanna bring and invite our attention, your attention to your, to your breath in this moment, to my breath and to our collective breath from wherever we are, we're sharing this life and time. If we can just take a deeper breath one of our deep breaths from the day, it's towards the end of the day now. Let's take a nice deep breath. Inhale and exhale at your own pace. Just wanna deepen our breaths, make it a little bit more conscious. And this is one of my favorite medicines to share in with myself and with my community here with you all. It has been working for me to breathe in what I want and exhale pain, exhale doubt, exhale fear, exhale nervios, anything that is wants to come out or is 
just not leaving enough space for joy in my body. I want to inhale what I want and exhale anything that's ready to come out and you want to move out with your powerful healing power. Welcome folks who are joining. My eyes are closed, facilitating with you. We're jumping into grounding right now. Welcome your breath into the space. And this grounding is to offer ourselves some loving contact with ourselves and with each other. I want to invite contact with our hands, with your hands, if it feels good and comfortable to do so. And I invite us to start with our head space, with the thoughts that cross through our mind today, with what we moved in this space and our mind space today. Our mind is our in our whole body and just want to notice part of its center is here on my head. I want to breathe in some love, loving thoughts for my mental health, for my mind right now. Breathe in what you want for your mind. If it's calm, some peace of mind. Breathe that in, imagine it entering your body and exhale anything that's not serving your mental health right now or your mind. Doubt is the eraser of dreams, says a good friend, Deacon Harold Medley. I want to move any doubts in my mind and bring in affirmations to my mind, my mental health. We're doing this. We're here. We're in struggle and we're here. Bringing in some healing breaths. Anything that doesn't want to be in there anymore, we have the power to release. Welcome folks joining. You are joining a grounding meditation in the moment. Jump in as you like. Bring in your breath and your contact. At your own pace, folks jumping in and folks continuing. Let's move. I invite us to move into our heart space. I invite contact with our corazones, with our hearts. Take a nice deep breath for your heart. If you haven't said what's up, if you haven't said hello to your heart today, take that time to say hello. If you haven't had a moment to say thank you or share gratitude to your heart for holding it down, holding down that beat all day, all night, if that feels good for you. I breathe in some gratitude for my heart, strength, endurance, tenderness. Exhale anything in my heart that crossed it today that didn't feel good. If I had any haterism, any thoughts in me, in my heart that weren't, that are not serving us, may they become out, come out transformed. In here live a lot of people maybe too, or some of your close, your loved ones, this is a good way to say hello to them too and send them any energy you want to send them through your powers and your intentions. Take a nice deep breath for that. Soon we'll be naming some folks that we have lost too. So I just want to say hello to them in our hearts and let them know we're having this conversation tonight thinking about them. Take a nice deep breath for our ancestors who become, who become ancestors too soon. Anything else you need for your heart right now, you can do that, we can do that, if that feels good to you. Take a nice deep breath for whatever else you want and need in your heart right now. And if you're with me and following, if you'd like, I invite you to bring your contact and your intention, your power is a little bit lower into our guts, our buns, our stomach. Take a nice deep breath, fill in, fill up your stomach, allow it to grow, allow it to be. Breathe it in, uh, breathe out for myself any, any shame that moves in this part of my body. <sighs> I want to breathe in affirmations for my wholeness and my post-pregnancy panza. 
breathe in what you need for your panza, for your stomach, for your gut. Check in in this space. How are you? How were how did you move from here today? How did you say yes from here? How did you say no from here today? And I invite this part of our body and our whole selves into the conversations today. For this last closing part, if you wanna just take your breath and your contact anywhere else in your body that you know just is calling you to have some contact to say to say hello. For me, it's just a hug, a little self hug here. But if it's your toes, your feet that need some attention right now, your knees, your back, your shoulders, your butt, your glutes, any part of you that wants your connection right now and your attention and wants to join our gender and sexuality conversation Breathe in to honor that space, part of your whole self and exhale any pain, anything that wants to come out and can, is ready to. And at your own pace, join us, come back to the collective. Slowly and surely, here we are. It feels good to stretch, move, shake, wiggle. We moved energy inside right now. Feel free to follow that flow. If you have access to water, that water can help, help us in our bodies keep moving. Energy we moved, if you want some tea, whatever. I hope you have access to it or have, can get your needs met. Welcome folks, it's a lot of us now. A lot more and welcome. Ooh. I wonder how many of us it is because we're gonna do an intro question. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, I see a lot of us. Um, let's see how we adjust to that a little bit. Um, hi y'all, welcome back. I was just happy to see more of you as, and I heard you all joining as we were in this grounding. Welcome folks. We are gonna hold some space right now before we have any conversation for, for especially trans folks in our communities and um, some, of, some folks as close to us here in Los Angeles, I was learning about a trans mujer who, who was killed in Los Angeles, March 17. And I wanna name them and center them and ask for permission to, um, and in their names, have these conversations, continue our grounding, thinking about them and moving as, as we still have breath in our lives here and we still have ability to move and, and join a Zoom meeting here and have these conversations. So if you're with me, I'm gonna name 11 people who identify or were identified as transgender, fam, family, folks, siblings. And I'm gonna say their names. And if you can, um, we can say presente if that feels good or present to invite their energy, their spirit, con permiso, with permission to have tonight's conversation. I think you are on mute, most of you though. So if you're not on mute and you can join and add in the way or in your own space, if you can say their name and you, and that, that energy can be heard in the space that you're holding to and wherever you are joining us from. The person that I'm, I'm naming who was killed in Los Angeles on March 17 is Rayana Par Pardo. Rayana Pardo. Presente. Presente. Tiana Davira Alexander. 
Presente. 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 Samuel Edmund Damian. Presente. Presente. Bianca Muffin Banks. Presente. 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 Dominique Jackson. Presente. 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 Fifty Bands. Presente. 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 Alexis Kimmy Icon Braxton. Presente. Presente. China Carrillo. Presente. Presente. Jeffrey JJ Bright. Presente. Presente. Jenna Franks. Presente. Presente. Diamond Kyrie Sanders. Presente. Presente. And circling back to Rayana Pardo. Presente. Presente. And all the unnamed um, folks all around the globe. And this is naming folks in this year um, and I've been seeing this year after year like a, some form of documentation of trans folks being killed throughout the year um, this is still happening so we're we're here to do everything that we can in our powers to stop this and to end this I'm not we're not naming a lot of folks so I, I want to to name them in that way right now to I want to honor all the lives to all our LGBTIQ fam folks and trans folks whose lives have been stolen and taken and uh, invite invite your memory into this space with all of us here who still have breath to do something about it in your name and your honor. Thanks. If it feels good to take another breath, folks, feels good and natural for me to honor their lives with my breath. Um, I welcome your breaths too. Thank you all. Thanks for joining in this way. We have a, a question to bring us into a conversation. To Sorry. Mm -hmm. Salud. No worries. And there are lots of us, and it might take a long time if we all go, but. Um, let me see. Yeah, but it's it's to build trust. So we want to do that. We want to build trust with each other. I'm going to offer the question and put it into the chat, actually, that so you could read it if that's possible. Let's see if it went in. Oh, no, I took I sent you all everything. That's cool. <laughs> There it is though. If you see in our agenda, um, number four, group introductions. In the course of our day to day, what is one way our gender and or sexuality was affirmed slash uplifted or surveilled, attacked? I welcome, if you feel like answering this question and introducing yourself, it's, um, it's not mandatory that you do that. So whoever feels like answering and introducing themselves, you're welcome to. You're also welcome to do that in the chat if you don't wanna speak it out loud. And thanks for, for listening in while folks are, are sharing. These are, this is just in our day to day. Want to name if it was something that felt uplifting and you don't have to answer both parts around, sur you don't have to answer surveilled and uplifted, but if you feel like it and need to go for it. Um, and I'll, I'll just share real quick and then pass it to Umi who, who was ready earlier and I want to pass it to you. I, today I got a, a message from my partner saying, I love you. It was the text message and I just felt affirmed in my sexuality and my love. And, um, I feel like, Hey, we haven't had a text. We don't, we hadn't, I hadn't had a text like that in a while and I noticed it. And when I received it, it felt good. So that's what I want to share here. 
Um, I'll start with that and pass it to you, Umi. Anything affirming or uplifting, or if you want to bring in surveilled, how your gender or sexuality was surveilled or attacked. Welcome. Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy to share. I there's so much. Um, that's so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that and just grounding us. And I feel like before our grounding and the acknowledgement, and um, um, I was just thinking about how great it was that today in my day I got to check in with. Uh, a lot of colleagues, GNC folks, uh, uh, folks of color, abolitionists. And so there was a lot of space of constant affirmation and, and now being here even more so. And I feel like being here with um, Stop LAPD um, Spying Coalition with you, Mariela, Rumba, Shela, always feels very, very affirming. And um, I am floating in so much affirmation in the midst of how all the many places my heart is at. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you for sharing um, that. Go for it, Shella. Um, so uh, I'm gonna be email and real, cause Shella keeps real. So today I was doing laundry and um, me and this woman were talking and I had this dress on and um, and this other dude, the maintenance guy, uh, like heard her call me it, like, oh, sis, you know, like, you know how black folks like to call each other sis? And this black man was like, looked at me and he was like, he gave the look. He didn't say anything, but he gave the look of like, how can that be a sister, you know? And it's like, yeah, that always gets me. It's like this gender policing of like, how could that be a woman, right? How could be that be a fit? Um, but yeah, that happened to me today. <laughs> Thank you, Chella, for sharing that and bringing that realness. And I'm sorry, personally, that that happened. Does anyone else want to, to go resonating with Chella? I want to go next. Also welcome to put your, your intro in the chat. If you don't wanna put your whole, answer the question in the chat, um, your name and pronouns are, are welcome too so that we can honor and respect how you'd like to be honored and respected and named in the space. Yeah, I think you know. Uh, my name is Rumba. I'm the director of Intransitive, and pronouns are they, them, uh, and I'm here in Arkansas, or what is called Arkansas, and um, I think uh, the surveillance part, can't remember what, it, it was surveillance or something. Um, attack. Yeah, <laughs> attack. So today the Arkansas uh, House and Senate voted to overrule uh, override the veto that the governor uh, put out yesterday on HB 1570, which bans all trans care to anyone under 18, regardless of parental consent, and um, allows insurance companies to refuse uh, to cover any trans care for any trans adults in the state. So, yeah, that's how that went today. Thank you for sharing that, Rumba, and we'll definitely want to hear more and get into more details later in the conversation. More intros, folks. More of you who might feel comfortable to share. We have a quota of 15 intros. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, I just want to make space if you want to share. I will only call committee members like Shakir and Akil, uh, who are part of our gender and sexuality committee. I want to invite you to, as I know you, 
to introduce yourselves. And you can say no too. <laughs> I can I can go. Um, hi everybody. My name is Hamid. I go by he him. Um, thank you very much for the space and happy to be sharing this. Um, and uh, I think just uh, listening to Roomba and uh, and the over the 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 veto uh, override what is happening, and we're also looking at the assault on voting rights and all of that. We're down to even what they're doing is denying people uh, and making it a crime to even offer water for people who are standing in line to cast their vote. I mean, these are the kind of laws that we are seeing going across uh, that are impacting people on so many different levels, um, gender, sexuality, they're, they're you know, just uh, and completely trying to disenfranchise communities on so many different levels, but really happy to be in this powerful space where we come together and, and, and build power and organize to fight back. So thank you. Thank you, Hamid. Cool. I'm gonna popcorn Shakir or Akil or anyone else. Hi everyone, I'm Akil. Um, I use he, him pronouns. And the question is how is um, your gender or sexuality affirmed or surveilled today? I, th I think um, mine is, is pretty much affirmed every day and all day by society at the expense of others um, as a cis and straight man. So um, I am looking forward to learning um, more and deepening my commitment and also understanding surveillance through this lens um, because I think it's a lens that definitely doesn't get. Um... <laughs> Thanks, Chella. Um, doesn't get mentioned in a lot of other spaces, despite how prevalent it is. So thank you all for letting me be here. And I guess I'll toss it to Shakir, who is also required to speak. <laughs> Encouraged. Thank you for, for naming that, Akil. Hi, Shakir. Yeah, hi, everyone. Thanks. Yeah, no, I've been kind of, even as you've been calling me, I've been kind of avoiding, because I just, I... Um, yeah, and oh yeah, I'm Shakir Rahman, um, I use he and they, um, and um, yeah, I've been um, listening to the different examples people have been talking about, appreciate what Chella shared, what Rumba shared about, um, and, and yeah, both the examples of, of being affirmed, um, and, and uh, Mariela, I liked your example of just, um, yeah, thinking of even affirmations like that as just um, as the, our, our interpersonal relationships and community, um, as the kind of source of, um, of, of, yeah, feeling like ourselves. Um, but yeah, I couldn't, you know, I, I'm just generally bad at icebreakers and I couldn't think of anything for either of the questions. That's what I was avoiding, but, uh, yeah, just, um, appreciate hearing from everybody. Sweet. Thank you, Shakir, for sharing that. Thanks for the vulnerability, y'all, too. Anybody else out there feel like sharing? It's at the tip of your tongue. Just want to encourage. And I also could, um, if it's cool, Julie, can I get permission to read what you wrote in the chat? Um, not everyone can read it sometimes. If you show me a thumbs up or something, I'll, I'll, have, I'll do that. There's a comment from uh, Julie, Maria. I don't know if you saw that. Yes, I saw that. I was. I just got your consent, Julie, to share or read it out loud. I have Julie Bernstein. Welcome. It's your first time. I see. I've never joined you before. I have been working as an advocate on criminal justice reform and privacy surveillance. My child is non-binary, and I am aware of the new legal challenges across the country to the freedoms of trans people. I want to learn so as to be a more effective advocate. Maria Lancella, would you mind posting the names of your orgs in the chat? Because you couldn't hear that. Thank you, Julie. And we are with Stop LAPD Spying Coalition. Cool. 
Cool. All right, folks. I, um, I'm just trying to see if I missed anybody else in the chat. Looks like we're we're good to go. Welcome, folks, joining. Um, anyone else? Just one last call. Last call for intros. And yeah, I saw Chela's comment. It is a deep question. We're just trying to go deep and be real. That's why. Um, but whatever you want to share is also welcome. Hi, Machete. You no, can we can't hear you. No. Can 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 they be unmuted? We have a friend. Yeah, give here. it a, give it a try. Go ahead. Okay, now I can. Hi, everyone. Is the sound all right? Yes, boo. Okay. Hi, Chela. Um, yeah, so I'm just joining in. I'm not sure what the conversation is about, but I saw the invite, so I wanted to like say hey. And yeah, I'll be here. Sweet. We were welcome. Thanks for jumping in like that. And we do have an intro question of how was your gender and or sexuality affirmed or uplifted today? Or how was it attacked or surveilled today? You could process that some more if you'd like and if you wanna share in a moment or, or come back to you, either is good. Oh, unmute Machete again. Okay, hi. Um, so yeah, I guess I feel my my gender feels like seen when my pronouns are are named, right? Um, and I feel kind of like I I feel attacked when I'm ungendered, and because I use I respond to he him pronouns, like when I hear they, I feel like oh, like you know, like I feel like I'm not being seen, and it does feel like a little hard. Um, so, and I, and I did experience that like just now, um, with you, Mariela, and I mean, I know it's all love, but, um, thank you for, for, um, making space for that. This yes, is important. thank you. Thank you for naming it and letting me know that I did that. And I want to say oops and sorry, and I will note that, um, and happy to affirm he, el machete. Thank you. Yeah, I'll be more careful. Thank you. Thanks for joining. And anybody else, this is the last call. <laughs> all right. There's more space for, for all your voices to come in. Um, Can I say something? I, yeah, of course. Uh, welcome, Ashanti. We welcome you and your, all your badass poppiness. Yes, I miss you. Anyway. Um, to be serious, I think we came up with the question just to let y'all know to like get folks in your headspace about like what's it like, you know, like what is it like for when you're when when something that's supposed to be so personal, so so a core of who you are, but also personal, it's either surveyed, surveilled, or attacked through the eyes of surveillance, like the state or through the community, like I named through community, right? Like in my experience. But there's like, as we know, what uh, 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 Rumba was talking about, you know, there's a lot of state laws and a lot of shit that's happening to trans folks right now, especially trans youth. And so like, I just wanted to let y'all know to give y'all a little context to let y'all know why this, this, this question is there. Um, maybe that'll help you. Um, I understand that it's kind of personal um, but I also, I, I also encourage you to think about it, you know, think about gender, think about your gender. Like, I loved how Akil was like, well, at the end of the day, I'm cis head and I, my, my gender is always affirmed, you know, for black men, their gender is not affirmed, right? You know, for black women, their gender is not affirmed, right? Um, so like, we got to think about these things. Um, uh, I'm done. He, I really, shooting. I mean, I really appreciate that because I feel like, um, you know, in my response to that question, I felt like I was, um, one, I'm like really grateful to be in a space where I get to work with gender queer and queer and trans folks and constantly find moments and spaces of affirmation. And 
part of why I felt so affirmed um, throughout the day today is because I got to honestly check in also with colleagues about many ways that I, I um, many ways that my gender is being policed or surveilled or harassed and, you know, opening up about like personal relationship building and how that's turned out. And, and you know, um, I, I just, um, um, there's, there's ways that like, I guess my gender and sexuality felt very um, colonized, if you will, um, um, in, in finding out that, you know, trying to build a relationship or, you know, with somebody that was not very, uh, forthcoming with surroundings or with like, you know, a wife or a person that they're co-parenting with. And there's an individual who, um, you know, uh, and you know that, that there's a lot of harassment involved in like uh, dead naming me and finding me on social media. And so it's just really like a lot of um, um, brew, like just navigating life and, and wanting to live. Um, but, you know, that's not a privilege that a lot of trans and queer folks get to experience and being able to open up about personal life at the workplace and then unpack that and be able to move on to the daily activities of, of what we're trying to achieve together. And um, um, I meant my, my check-in and then also it was partially about that, about how in many violent, aggressive ways, um, my gender and sexuality is being um, colonized or or um, or surveilled and and questioned and um, judged or other and so it's really interesting navigating wanting to empower myself this weekend on researching like what do I have at my disposal how do I keep myself safe from this harassment um, um, how do I want to avoid um, law enforcement or like like any kind of um, restraining orders, but then also considering like, you know, safety issues or threats and things like that make me feel extremely uncomfortable and very unsafe in my own home where I live by myself, um, you know, and so, and so um, today felt very unique to check in in, in daily check-ins, uh, multiple meetings with, with queer and trans folks and get to unpack what, what I'm really going through. And by the time I arrived here today, you know, I've, I've been able to process things that I don't actually process for myself often. And so, um, because we're just, you know, I, I'm in survival mode and just trying to move on to the next thing. And so um, thank you for naming that and inviting us to, you know, bring, uh, thank you for being very vulnerable and very honest and real about all of the ways, all of the many ways that, um, we are surveilled can look like. Oh, I feel you, I hear you, Umi. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yes. And so Umi, um, she, her, ella, I'm a director of Portland United Against Hate. It's an organization that started about seven years ago um, in response to a hate crime that happened in Portland. Um, there was a, <clears throat> a young white man in uh, public transportation that had stood up to to an individual that was engaging in a hate crime towards a black Muslim woman and um, a, a few other teens. Um, and was um, this, this person was brutally attacked by the aggressor and uh, murdered. And so the city of Portland responded with um, wanting to support racial justice organizations that are addressing hate crimes or are uh, addressing um, um, social justice issues. Um, that you know, if we if we address more, they can. There are also root causes of hate crimes and rise of hate crimes that many communities are often facing. And um, uh, yes, that's great to be on. Thank you, Umi. Well, that's a, a good start for our. The next piece is welcome you, welcoming you, Umi and Rumba, uh, to help us hold some space tonight. So just want to share some questions with you all, whatever feels comfortable for you both to share back. And um, our hope is to then open it to everybody for some more dialogue on what you all will be highlighting tonight. So um, the first question, you might have shared a little bit of it already, is who are you? How's your heart right now? How's your heart doing? And who or what are you bringing into the space? today. Would you like to go first, 
Roomba, give Umi a breath, or Umi, do you feel like continuing your flow right now? Either way. Um, I can start, I guess. Um, so again, my name is Roomba. My pronouns are they, them. Um, one of the co-founders and right now the director in Translative in Arkansas. And um, I felt like my chest has been hurting all day. Like something is like stepping on my chest. Um, which I was just writing a status a few minutes ago, not while we were on this, but before this uh, about just feeling like my, my heart is trying to get out right, and to find peace elsewhere. Um, Cause I can feel myself holding so much, you know, and um, and and fe feeling like I, I I need to I need to disconnect uh, my heart from my from my mind in order to be able to keep going and to stay focused and to um, help the other the other trans folks that um, are organizing with me to get our spirits up. Um, and so I want to bring all those folks in here and also so all the trans folks that have been here on the ground organizing against this bills. And also a dear friend um, that I lost a few years ago, Amarita. She's a young black trans woman in Fayetteville and uh, very visible, very um, strong and always showing up as her full self um, and speaking out. And um, remember she, one of our events she wrote, um, for trans visibility, we have the right to be, a, we have the right to be around and exist. And that um, has always stuck with me. So in a lot of intransitive, um, like on our website and, and things like that, you'll see that quote and it's just to uh, continue to honor her and, and hold her with us. Thank you, Rumba, for sharing and bringing the person you named into the space, your friend. Thank you. Take a breath for you and for them. And I'll pass it to our, our friend here, Omi. How are you? Who are you? <laughs> who are you? How's your heart doing right now? What or who are you bringing into the space? Yeah, um, uh, I'm Umi, um, child of Tepewan uh, Odami immigrant parents. Um, I'm originally from Tangva, Southeast uh, Maywood um, area born and raised there half of my life and then raised over here in the Pacific Northwest or um, in Clackamas, Kalapuya lands. And <clears throat> I, I'm bringing in um, and, and carrying uh, my friend Titi Goli, um, a uh, trans woman here in Portland who was also murdered a few years ago, uh, going on to two years now. <clears throat> and um, um, Titi, you know, was always in spaces and always um, bringing in people into the spiritual realms, I would say, prayer, always engaging in prayer. I remember one too many times feeling like, TT, I really have to write this grant. I really have to do this thing. But, you know, here we are talking about and praying about affirming ourselves in our gender, despite the world and society and me realizing in the moment I had no idea how much I needed this and how much this would really, really help me even right now. And TT Goli is that kind of an individual, that kind of spirit. Um, and um, yeah, I call them in just um, around their two year anniversary of, their, of the, their life and spirit being taken away from us too soon. And um, um, continuously doing this work with community that, that has known her, so. Thank you for bringing them into, for bringing Titi in and your whole self. This next question you may have already shared a little bit, um, would love to hear some more. 
around what are you currently working on organizing? What organization movement lands people are you organizing with and for? If there's anything else you wanna add from what you have shared before we get into the laws and things. I wanna come back to you, Rumba. Take turns. Yeah. Um, so we most recently been working against the anti-trans bills that have been pushed out in Arkansas. There's so many, um, and so many of them are exactly the same, with the exception of like a line that gets added at the end. Um, and most of the time, that line is just to take away another type of right or to create another type of oppression. But um, so there are similar like um, sports bills targeting trans women and girls, and then they'll just add a little a little line at the end to make them different. Um, there are there there are more than one, so it's more than just HB fifteen seventy around healthcare. Um, and they're also trying to pass constitutional amendments to the Arkansas Constitution and create loopholes to be able to bypass uh, federal law. So try <laughs> focusing on that. Um, we've had some rallies on the ground um, outside of the Capitol. We've mobilized folks to go and testify against these bills. A lot of folks who had never engaged in um, legislative work before, but are now um, able to find that space and, and, and see the need to have their voices be heard. And um, then we've had a random, no, I don't wanna say random, but um, just different uh, phone bankings, um, for folks to be calling representatives and apply pressure. And then um, a lot of it has been a digital push to try to get the narrative out. And um, sorry, am I going into another question that I- No, that's, that's totally fine. Okay. Um, so trying to get the narrative out, a lot of folks don't pay attention to the South and the things that happen in the South and out of the South, hardly anyone ever invest in Arkansas, um, especially like for like queer and trans organizing in Arkansas, we get overlooked. People don't think that trans people exist in Arkansas. <laughs> um, in organizing spaces that I've been outside of Arkansas, I usually always get asked two things. Um, there are trans people in Arkansas. And the other one is how do you survive in Arkansas? So being able to put out the narrative of what's happening here and how folks are resisting so that it's viewed from outside and people are, are, are tuning in and trying to apply pressure from the outside because it's something that you know, we just haven't seen in the past. And inside corporations that are allies or have claimed to be allies in the past, um, who have spoken before in previous bills, in previous legislative sessions are not speaking up now. So there's so many, so many folks who are influencers who have power, who are just remaining silent inside of Arkansas. So trying to put out the narrative and get folks to, to notice and to apply pressure from outside. Um, thankfully, thanks to, you know, just like so many folks organizing, um, We've had some trans celebrities who've spoken up about it. Um, Raquel Willis, um, Chase, I can't pronounce his last name. Uh, Stangio, is that correct? Uh, he's a well-known trans attorney. Um, Levering Cox was on a conference uh, call with myself and a couple of other folks. Um, and then some people from some well-known doctors and whatnot. Um, there's a trans athlete, I forget his name, Chris, maybe something uh, or another. I'm so bad with names, I'm sorry. But uh, the thing is there are folks who, there are folks through, through our trans siblinghood outside of Arkansas who have platforms and they have been the first ones 
I would say to step up and shine a light here and try to get pressure applied to Arkansas. And so um, that has been a lot, a lot of the work, uh, creating political art, um, having checking meetings with LGBTQ organizations around the state. Uh, we have weekly meetings with over 10 organizations and just trying to figure out all the ways in which we apply pressure, um, but mainly trying to get that pressure from outside because we're not, we're not getting a lot of support from people with power and influences inside. Thank you, Rumba. And we'll make sure we, we have space to hear more concrete ways that I think some of us are on the outside too of Arkansas, or most of us. So it'd be great to have some more clarity leaving on what we could do. And, and for us who are, who are here to come up with, you know, proposals or ideas too. But we'll get into that a little bit more and wanna pass it to you, Umi, on what are you currently working on or organizing? What organization, movement, lands, people are you organizing with and for? Yeah, totally. Um, so um, at PUA, um, PUA is like a coalition um, here in the local Portland region. It expands throughout the state of Oregon. Um, roughly 98 organizations that do racial justice work, uh, environmental justice, refugee immigrant rights work. Um, they've uh, come together to address just a, a series of, of wave of communities experience, uh, experiencing reported hate crimes. Um, and um, so essentially, uh, I've come into the, um, into the organization the last few months as it's um, thinking about how to address this um, in many forms. There's been phases of training communities, organizations on how to provide support to folks that have experienced hate crimes, uh, providing opportunity on building communities. So folks um, who are living extremely isolated in the city um, also are a part of building community um, with other groups. And um, I, I think I mentioned this is Calapuya, Calapuya Clackamas lands and um, it's, um, yeah, it, essentially, um, oh, oh, Janelli. Oh, Janelli. hi. Well, we can have to join us in this conversation. Oh, how wonderful, great to have you, hola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, um, as a community, um, we're gathering to address and uh, offering support uh, for folks that have experienced hate crimes and figure out how to um, also be part of transformative justice as a movement, uh, encouraging that and, and addressing a lot of um, uh, anti-racism and anti-Blackness that are root causes to a lot of the hate crimes that community here in Portland have continuously faced. Um, and we've also created like an intake um, uh, an intake re reporting on hate crimes that has been used more by community locally than other traditional forms that are not trusted. And so we want to, so we we gather these and collect these to just um, um, address the issue more as, as it continues to arise um, in political spaces where it's being disregarded. Thank you, Umi. Um, this next piece is to get in more into the laws. That was one of our intentions in preparing tonight's meeting. Uh, one of our gender and sexuality committee team members noticed that these laws were coming through. Not all of us in our coalition committee had heard about them. So we chose this topic for tonight so that we could get informed. Um, so if this, this question feels really relevant on, on your end, Rumba, and anything that you wanna add to it, Umi as well. You, you you were talking about it, uh, Rumba, earlier. But I, my question was, what's up with these new laws? And I comment, new and old. Um, what's going on? What should we know? What and who are behind um, behind these laws? Who are maybe okay. our targets that okay. we could be thinking about? Um, so in Arkansas, the main group that I've seen is uh, the Family Research Council. And I keep very intentional in naming them because they're just terrible, <laughs> right? And they're every, they're, they're a known hate group and they're everywhere. 
uh, in the country and they are pushing this type of laws. Um, Can you repeat their name again or put yes. it in the chat? Is the Family Research Council. Okay. I'll put it. Um, so they're like, they are classified as a hate group. They um, have an office, I think a block or two blocks um, away from the Capitol. So they're always there. They've been present at every committee hearing. Um, they arrive and they reserve seats. So they've kept uh, people who have registered to testify who we brought. They kept them from being able to be in the room because they take, you know, because of social distancing, you can't sit, sit like next to each other, right? So um, they take up as many seats as they can. And so there's no space in the committee rooms and we have to go into the holding rooms. Um, and um, yeah, so they're always there. I don't know how early they get there, but they're always there. Uh, they always take you know, the front row or all the seats as possible. They get as much time to speak for the bills as they want. Um, they fly people in from out of state just because they have so many, so much money and resources to do that. Um, and I've also seen them, I guess it's guarding the representatives, but in one of the hearings, anytime a representative would go up to go out to the bathroom, grab a drink or whatever, somebody from the Family Research Council would get up and like follow them and just like walk right next to them. And I don't know if that's to ensure that like nobody's talking to them or influencing them or to like whisper something in their ear. I'm not exactly sure, but they're always there. Um, they, they're they definitely pushing all of these anti-trans bills. They're also pushing all the abortion bills. And, um, and aside from that, you know, like recently this Saturday, Saturday, yes, it should have been Saturday that we released on the Intransitive page, um, a list of corporations that have given um, so much money to the sponsors of these bills, and some of them claim to be our allies, right? So there's Walmart um, that has given over $160,000. For those of you that don't know, Arkansas is the home of Walmart. This is where Walmart was created. We have their home office in Northwest Arkansas, and it's if you ever come to Arkansas, the Northwest Arkansas area of, of the state, it's, it's like a whole different world compared to the rest of Arkansas. That's where all the money stays. Um, they pretty much divided cities by corporations, right? There's like Bentonville has, uh, it's Walmart, everything you could go to the, to the center of the, um, to the square in Bentonville and find at least uh, three like buildings owned by Walmart. Um, you can see Walmart's name on things. The one of the only like major museums is owned by Walmart. You know, you'll find a Walmart in every corner. Springdale is the home of Tyson. Tyson was also created here in Arkansas. And there's even trees on the streets that have a, a sign that says that Tyson donated them. So corporations there like own everything, created their own other world, and the rest of the state doesn't get that funding. But so these corporations, like I mentioned, Walmart, um, ExxonMobil, AT&T, uh, United Health Group, and, oh, I may be missing one. Um, but we posted that if you visit the Intense Report, you'll see them there, and we listed how much money they, they've given to, to the sponsors of these bills. And these are the same corporations that have refused to speak up against these bills. Um, and aside from that, which is, um, there are a lot of white supremacists here, as I know that they are in a lot of the country, but we have like hubs of white supremacists, right? And there, and there's a, a town here that I, I don't know um, people of color that would visit that town willingly. I know that I don't, um, it's known for, you know, like being predominantly like white supremacists. But um, for the past few years, um, as I've been trying to track them and like dig into their things, they have been pushing to make Arkansas a sanctuary state for white nationalists. And so as if you look at the bills that are being passed, there's a sovereignty bill in Arkansas. And that sovereignty bill is to 
override federal law. So it would make Arkansas constitution be higher than federal law and it would punish any law enforcement who follows any federal law or any federal mandate um, that is not approved by Arkansas. And so I'd say, you know, like that push is coming from who is funding the pockets of these representatives and it's these corporations that claim to be allies and then refuse to speak up until last minute. And then uh, Family Research Council is involved in every piece of legislation that is being passed and will bring all the witnesses that they want to testify. And then on the other hand, there's all the white, white supremacists, white nationalists that are pushing their agenda under the code of protecting the right to bear arms because that's what this sovereignty bill is supposed to do. But as you read through it, you'll see it's, it's actually them just trying to bypass federal law. So I'd say that folks, um, I think that folks have the misconception, misconception that Arkansas is, is very backwards and, and very um, uh, ignorant and, and, you know, and all of these things. And that's the reason why all this hate is coming out in the legislative session. And it's a lot of, of influence from outside, um, definitely as an attempt to, to test everything that they're trying to pass in the rest of the country. And you will see, that's the reason why HB 15, 1570 is the first one of its kind in the whole country to have passed. Thank you for that very important information. Um, I'm processing what you shared, Rumba, and, and excited for, for more of us to join the conversation too and see what we can do. Very, very important info you're, you're giving us, thank you. Um, I want to pass the same question to you, Umi. What's up with these new laws? What's going on? What should we know? What? Who's behind this? Um, who are our targets potentially? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I feel like um, as Ruma's pointing out, um, all of the involvement of these corporations and and all of the funding that they're contributing to, <clears throat> and thinking of Walmart as well, how much Walmart has funded, you know, schools allegedly, and 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 privatizing schools rather <clears throat> and and how much of that is going on in a place also like Little Rock and so many other places that like uh, corporations investing in education um, in, in a privatizing way um, is affecting a lot of folks of color, low-income communities, trans and queer folks in particular to like as you're asking about the laws there's also a connection to like um, here in Oregon at least um, a few years ago I think sometime in 2017 Mind you, obviously, very transphobic situations have always happened to folks, to students everywhere. Um, and particularly outside of Portland, the metro area, there's a city called Wilsonville. Um, and um, there was a middle school student um, who uh, was not being allowed to use uh, the locker room and restrooms of their the gender they identify as. Um, and a school board in Wilsonville for a little bit had, you know, made decisions to alter this student being able to live their daily life as a student in the school. And um, through organizing, through a lot of community organizing um, and pushback towards the school district, they were then made to do better and outlines, you know, an affirming way that the student can uh, be a student at the middle school and all trans students. However, um, shortly after in 2018, there was another um, transphobic family in the same school district then, then decided to sue the school board and um, uh, was going after the school board of education, um, the, the, the department of education at the state. Um, and it was, what was this sometime in 2019, early 2020, um, it was decided in uh, the ninth circuit court in Oregon that all trans students and gender non-conforming students um, have a right to uh, be part of sports and be part of their school. Um, uh, in their affirmed selves um, uh, as their, uh, the gender they identify. And so um, for the work that we do in PUA, there is a correlation of what was happening at the time in 2017 and 2018. There were multiple reported hate crimes towards um, trans individuals and trans youth. Um, and so some that we would even respond to that, you know, folks would call into our line or feel more comfortable reporting through PUA than submitting any kind of formal um, anything for support or to report the hate crimes. Um, 
So in 2017, there was a, a series of hate crimes in Wilsonville that were reported um, and more community organizing that really supported and pushing back to how the school wanted to respond uh, very naturally and just very easily um, in terms of, of not allowing um, this student to, to engage in, in, um, uh, in the sports that they wanted to as their full selves. And so um, there's definitely a connection there in terms of how these corporations are investing in, in really uh, harming us in so many, so many ways. Um, and to Rumba's point, that there's these ideas that wherever we don't find maybe even liberal or, or pro-trans issues, that there's something backwards going on when really it's a corporate funding and, and, and uh, power and elected officials, um, you know, um, corroborating with that and being part of that, that um, sell out to those things as well through their own transphobia as well, of course. And, um, and I think I wanted to say, at least to Oregon's history, especially as a state that was created, you know, the Oregon Trail um, um, at Oregon was created in the 1850s, uh, um, uh, established as a state during a time of uh, reconstruction in this country, a time where uh, a lot of areas in the north and the south of the country were very uncomfortable with um, the liberation of black folks and, and communities of color. And so Oregon was created for folks that like, hey, if you're willing to risk your life and migrate such a long distance, as long as you arrive to this place called Oregon and you build land, then you have property there for yourselves. Also, as long as you understand that this is a, a, a state not for black people and not for indigenous people, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, um, I think there's those very clear connections also through um, these moments and instances in, in current times around transphobia as well. Uh, Yes, yes. I'm here. Um, so what can we what can and what should we be doing? Um Roomba? Like what what can folks that are outside of uh Arkansas be doing to support and learn about this? Um, so one of the worries that uh, I've had is that because HB 1570 is, is the first of its kind, it has brought a lot of attention to Arkansas. But now that it has been passed into law, all that attention is going to leave. And we have so many more anti-trans bills like going on. You know, there's one that forces teachers to misgender and, and dead name every student. Um, and that passed one of the committees today. But so there's just there's just there's more, right? And there are ones there are some bills that aren't even specifically anti-trans, but they are going to directly impact um, black and brown students, black and brown youth. And um, so I would urge folks to to not lose sight of what's happening in Arkansas, um, to uplift trans led organizing in Arkansas um, and to, <laughs> to keep following us. Um, there's, there's next steps that we haven't released yet, um, but we'll be releasing by the end of the week for folks to engage. Um, and also I want, to, I want folks to know that these bills are being introduced in other states and our friends at uh, uh, Knights and Orchids TKO in Alabama are also fighting similar bills. Um, and as you know, like Ubi was mentioning too, so many of this is, it just, it's all connected, right? Like it's the same folks behind things. 
And so if if we know that Walmart, you know, is one of these major corporations, if we know that Walmart is influencing things here in Arkansas, Walmart is also influencing it in Portland. It's also for instance in, in Alabama and so forth. So if we could, if we were able to attack these corporations because they have such power over legislators in these states, if we could make those corporations apply pressure through everywhere, not just Arkansas, right? Alabama too, you know, Portland too, like everywhere, right? Like, where is this happening? I want Walmart to not only stop it in Arkansas, I want, I want Walmart to stop it in Alabama because there are trans folks in Alabama, right? And, and there's trans folks who are gonna hurt everywhere. So we gotta figure out a way to, to make that push together. And then when we're asking those demands from folks who have platforms, um, from influencers online who can speak on this stuff, that they're mentioning it, that they're mentioning all the states, right? That, that these bills are being highlighted so that we don't get folks left behind. Um, because that's happening so much in Arkansas. Folks forget that it's happening in Arkansas and then we, we get left out. Um, I don't want anybody else to be left out. So to recap, we'll have more next step happening, uh, more next steps are being released towards the end of this week. Um, I can't say it right now, but they will be released towards the end of this week. So. If you want to follow us as at intransitive.ar on Facebook and Instagram and at intransitive capital AR on Twitter. Um, and the next thing is just making sure that the push is, you know, for everyone, right? Like we don't want to leave folks, especially like trans youth left out anywhere um, that we can, that we can all collectively make that push. Thank you. Um, what about you, Umi? What do you have to say? Um, same question. Yeah, I feel like um, echo what Rumba has said. Also, um, definitely follow the leadership of trans Black and uh, brown folks of the South um, and transitive especially. Uh, thank you so much, Rumba, for your leadership and engaging us so creatively, artistically, like always through social media. Um, despite how much and how intense it feels to even see from a distance what's happening from Portland to um, Arkansas, it's great to be engaged with your through your all's leadership um, digitally. Um, and in a time of COVID realizing that, you know, we've been connected that way, we could continue supporting that way. Um, so I would echo um, in, in supporting, um, uh, the leadership of trans folks at, at multiple margins. Um, I think also just, you know, there's ways that we can make um, the connections. I think also um, um, being that, you know, that conversation about education being privatized, it's also really scary what schools will be allowed to do, you know, with furthering examples of how to charter schools or privatize education and how awful and how gender oppressive education, public education is already on top of that. You know, I think I mentioned Wilsonville, part of um, that city, part of what was really appealing to suburban families uh, in, in uh, about pushing themselves and their families away from public education is the fact that, you know, uh, uh, trans inclusion was even being considered. And so it's really interesting to see um, uh, how transphobia or how any oppression also influences and encourages people to, to um, I don't know, to just normalize other forms of oppression too. And so um, I think in supporting, yeah, organizations that, that um, uh, shout out to the, the Center for Artistic Revolution as well. Um, that's a coalition partners of, of Intransitive and a lot of the great artistic work that they do, um, check them out. Um, yeah. If you're not a part of, if you maybe are also in a place where maybe you don't have a local organization that you feel offers some of this, maybe also check out a national organization as well and be, be part of one. Um, uh, yeah. Thank you, Yumi. Um, 
I mean, this question is kind of similar. How do we build power to build the world that we, to build, to build the kind of world that we do want across state lines? How do we build power? Um, spaces like this <laughs> where folks who, you know, may not have heard about specific groups um, can hear about them, connect with them. Um, I met the folks at TKO, Knights and Orchids in Alabama um, through a gathering. And ever since then, we just connect over memes, really, mainly <laughs> just connect over memes on Facebook and share some joy with each other. And that has also allowed us to um, lean on each other when we've been supporting um, black trans women here in the South, um, trying to connect with other uh, trans-led organizations that are in the South because the South, there's a lot of migration by trans folks or trans folks migrating throughout the South as means of survival. And so being able to connect with each other and to have some relationship with each other to be able to just grab the phone and call and, you know, say I have a black trans woman in this state that I need to be able to, you know, I don't know, like transport to this other state so she can have safe housing, um, things like that. I think spaces that can bring folks to just build community and to, to build community that is not only around pain, even though it's needed, only around pain and struggle, but um, spaces to also be able to laugh and and rejoice. Um, I think ultimately it all comes back to relationships. You know, the especially in the South, organizing is so is so rooted in relationship. Um, and that trust, like who's who's gonna vouch for you that you're not gonna mess us up, right? Um, that you aren't here to hurt us, but that you're actually um, you're actually family. So spaces to build those those relationships and to grow and, and be able to lean on each other. And sorry, share resources, which has been crucial here in Arkansas um, due to the lack of support coming in, right? Over the past year with the pandemic, um, we've been able to, to provide for folks by sharing resources. Like in Transitive Zoom account is shared by, I think like three or four other organizations. Uh, one of them is in Mexico and they have access to our Zoom account to be able to, you know, do a lot of the work that they, that they need to do. Um, but yeah, being able to share those resources with each other and think of it as, this is how we can collectively like keep our people safe, right? And get out of that uh, scarcity mentality. This is not about which org is gonna be at the top. It's about um, how can we all be here to, to hold our folks. Thank you, Rumba. What about you, Umi? What do you have to say? Um, similarly, um, in, in you know, continuing and investing um, the work that you're already doing around abolition, um, abolition of these of these uh, ideas and binaries and um, uh, prisons and cages is definitely all interconnected. And so, it's very great to see how you all hold space here um, in this way. I think in supporting organizations that um, also do that. Um, I mean, I, I honestly, in thinking about our abolitionist work in Portland, we're oftentimes also looking at what um, Stop LAPD um, Spying Coalition is doing um, as well. So um, shout out to you all. And, and um, yeah, we see you. What can we do? <laughs> no. Yeah. Y'all caught me with sweet things in my mouth. Okay. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, I think, you know, like uh, just sharing the work, uplifting each other's work, uplifting each other's uh, joys. I love what um, Roomba said around like, a lot of the times like trauma bonding seems to be the biggest thing, right? Like there's so much trauma online. There's so much shit, right? that we don't celebrate in the joys. Like Stop LAPD Spying has done a bunch of work 
uh, on dismantling programs of LAPD, you know, like, um, you know, let's keep it real. Shelly keeps it real. Black trans woman leading a punk band is, you know, I'm, I'm naming myself, you know, that's huge, you know, and I've been doing a lot, you know, I think celebrating the things, the joys that we do do, um, as well as sharing the trauma, you know, because it's, it's both, you know, it's a mixture of both. Sharing the life, the little little ones, you know, sharing the joy with the little ones that we see on here. We see you, little one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so cute. Um, sorry, y'all, I'm ADD. I go that way when I see a kid. Love babies, love children, love the little ones. And I'm eating things. Um, any other, <laughs> any other questions, Maria? It was um open ended. If for any last comments you have in closing, and then we we have Q and A from folks or or dialogue. Just we're at the end of it. Anything you want to add, Rumba or Umi, before? Q&A or want to open it to Q&A and then have some closing thoughts that also works. Mommy. Where are you going to go? I think I'm just thinking about um um yeah, just a lot of love to to us uh queer, gender queer non-conforming folks and trans folks in, in our families, in our family spaces. Um, I think it's beautiful that we've also chosen to be part of um, the families that we're a part of. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking a lot about my family always, uh, just because I think uh, I, I've worked with Mariela and Rumba before, and I think of you all as family, uh, uh, and many of you at uh, Stop LA Spying Coalition. And I know that I've shared about just like my, my growing pains and, and transforming through pains uh, with family. And so um, lots of love to us, um, GNC trans folks and queer folks in our family, yes. Yeah, I was gonna say something similar to Umi, <laughs> but um, something about, so yeah, Umi, Maria and I have worked together before and um, something about joining this and, and seeing you all. Um, made me feel a lot better, um, especially that grounding. Thank you. And um, yeah, uh, thank you for the space. Thank you, <laughs> thank you for um, for listening, for paying, for paying attention to Arkansas. Uh, one of the things that <clears throat> one of the calls that we put out. Um, a couple of days ago was asking folks to send uh, messages of love to trans youth in Arkansas. So if you have <laughs> messages of love to send, uh, and that could be actual words, it could be a painting, it could be, you know, whatever it is that you want to send, um, you can send it to us via, via any of the social media platforms or, or via email um, or, or a tweet makes it a lot easier to find, but um, trying to put as, as much messages of love, um, and especially folks who speak Spanish. Um, so for those of you that don't know, there are a lot of um, trans Spanish speakers here in Arkansas, and there are a lot of uh, monolingual uh, trans Spanish speakers here. So having messages of love for trans youth, having messages of love to trans people, it's always welcome. There's some crying happening, so I can't facilitate so too much. I hear you all and open it to Q and A. Okay, yeah. So, do, do we have any questions uh, for the panelists, y'all? I'm gonna. There may have been a question. Where do we send the art? And it's to your um, in transitive emails or mail to some art. Oh, great question. 
or it was like the, the letters to the youth or something or other, maybe that was that that question? Yeah, from, that was Roomba. Yeah. Do we send the art to uh, Roomba? Um, I put in the chat is info at intransitive.org. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for the panelists? Maybe a quick uh, comment and a suggestion as well. So uh, uh, I think it may also be uh, instructive to, to kind of look at some of the other programs that are criminalizing youth and how they would be, can, will be used uh, to further demonize and criminalize. So I'm thinking of the work around our war on youth, um, the folks that have been lifting this issue of preventing violent extremism. Uh, which is a program that the FBI uh, launched uh, in 2016, which is now in every school from K through 12. And it's, it's, uh, it's built upon uh, observing behavior of youth. Um, and and, then the, and the, the claim is that by, you know, if the youth are too much into their culture or if they're angry or if they're expressing anger through art and various other things, um, then they are on this line, on this pathway to extremism. And radicalization. So this is this is this is this BS stuff around anti-terrorism, but similarly, you know how these these uh, practices will be used to, to criminalize youth through that behavioral surveillance. Uh, we also have the see something, say th something program, where anybody can profile and call in. So, <clears throat> and that program is very pervasive, all around the United States as well. So just wanted to kind of share that with uh, uh, with Roomba and, and Umi and, and particularly, you know, as this work is going on. Um, uh, so the, here, there you go, so how to physically restrain youth, absolutely. So that's how, you know, just rooted in, in this anti supposedly anti violence now they're giving teachers guns as well uh, to bring it on campus. So, so yeah, so just wanted to throw that in that you know, how to be aware of that and, and what's our fight back. I think Susan had a comment about electronic monitoring, Chella. If, um, if I may. Uh, yes, you know, go ahead, Susan. My, pro, my pronouns are you be you and I'll be me. And Chella, you'll always be my sweet sis, okay? And don't pay attention to anybody that don't care about you. Uh, I do. And, um, you know, about electronic monitoring, you know, uh, where I live, uh, I am completely um, surveilled, completely. And they have a, a system in uh, its public housing. It's a project based housing, um, subsidized. And um, it's like um, an indefinite detention without charge. Uh, with the architecture and infrastructure of surveillance state uh, with cameras and sensors. Um, and I believe we have a right to know and have and have that defined if we're living in a system like that. And, and I have been um, pressing to get that system uh, uh, defined and uh, to know exactly what it is. And they're, they're keeping it secret. They, they believe it's a proprietary um, secret and they won't they won't let us know. But um, there's there's no guidelines on anything like that. You know, you, the police uh, action uh, due to this kind of monitoring because this whole building is monitored and it is uplinked into uh, the police um, camera system, or you know, like at Piper, um, and. Um, the police can spy and act independently from that data that they're uplinking. And um, if they see something there that they want to um, act on, they can do it. And not only that, you know, of course, there's also uh, monitoring. And, you know, like everything is can be seen. Uh, they can use um, systems that they can hack and and crack and crack it you know crack your jack and jack your system uh disk encryption systems uh cell site simulators those are um stingrays 
and they can and, and use uh, camera sensors on anybody. And especially if they feel like they're interested in you. If you are trans or uh, uh, transgendered or um, gay person, you know, they that's enough for them to follow you and, and constantly be watching you just to find you doing something. It's like, um, it's, it's perpetual a punishment. It's like you're always being punished uh, by uh, a system that sees everything and, and never forgets anything. Any little infraction is, is um, what they call, uh, you know, just cause for them to stop you. And in, a, in one stop, could make it could change your life. One time the police stopping you can change your life. And um, and and uh, uh, Hamid, in your report, your community based report for uh, last year, uh, surveillance 101 uh, teach in, you said something about guilt until proven innocent. We well, see I don't think I don't think it's like that. I think it's guilt until the setup, until they drop the trap door on you. And you know, they can they can put you in a situation once they are surveilling you 24-7. And and that's you know, that's that's not done by a police officer, you know, watching you on a stakeout. That's done by uh, an electronic system that never sleeps. And um, I don't think uh, that's to their uh, strategic, st strategic planning of control and use of uh, a system like that is manipulation and, has, ha and, and harassment and gang stalking. It's uh, authoritarian abuse and it's punitive when you're uh, surveilled at that level. And that's the way it is where I live here. And uh, they can use that type of uh, a data feed to manipulate you and and uh, and cause you um, stress, like they have tried to e to evict me out of here without cause, you know, tried to set it up. And there's always some little setup that they're trying to do. Um, a few months ago, they threatened me, but I re I've reported all of this to um, Adult Protective Services, so I'm not totally alone trying to fight, uh, 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 you know, the uh, landlords, which are, you know, uh, have all the resources and a, and a high tech surveillance system. And, and so I'm not completely alone. I have uh, reported everything to the county and I collected evidence of electronic monitoring and uh, harassment. So I just wanted to say that they put us in a position and that's everybody, actually, that they think that they feel interested in. And it puts you in a position where you're like in a virtual prison. If they don't want, if you're the other, if you're not the one that they they want to uh, protect, because it's, it's not really protection. It's, it's uh, overbearing and it's just... Um, it's just not, you know, it's not right. And they only do this to people that are vulnerable and uh, in a situation uh, being, you know, uh, the other or non-white. So I just wanted to add that. And, um, and uh, you know, I think I uh, had this all planned out, but, you know, I, I just lost my plan and thinking about it. But oh, here's one thing I wanted to say about this. Uh, this this type of surveillance that they're using now, especially with the um, uh, cell site simulator, which traps your phone um, and takes all the data out of your phone. And whereas you can get the data out of your phone, which changes your life, okay? Because everything in that phone is your life. And people don't realize how much data they put into that phone. and they can tell everything about you and they can suck all of it out with one of these devices and they don't you don't even have to see them they can be out on the street doing it and have uh, the device in their trunk of their car 
And that doesn't, it's not only them, anybody, because this, this, these are weapons of war that, that were developed during uh, the 22 decades of war in the Middle East. And um, they brought this home and they gave it to the police departments. They militarized the police department with these weapons of war. And then the police start using it locally, even though the feds have, have laws against it uh, that they have to get uh, a warrant to use it. But yet the local police do not. And an individual policeman that might have a beef could, could track you with this and find his opportunity to accost you or to stop you and what, uh, put his knee on your neck? So uh, the thing is, um, these weapons of war um, need to be stopped for one thing. They need to take away um, the ability for the cops to, to do this and do it independently and secret. And um, also you said um, in the community-based community, uh, report, Hamid, that, uh, guilt until proven innocent. I just wanted to make sure you understand that it's not about that. It's about the setup and about what they can actually, you know, how they can actually put you in a position to punish you for being you. And, um, oh, and it's, I have gathered evidence on it. Uh, because uh, a lot of people don't realize that you can gather evidence on this. And uh, I, I got the equipment, I got it from Germany, and uh, I actually gathered evidence on anomalies and electromagnetic frequencies where I live. So it, it's, it's not totally invisible. They are, they can be, it can be um, visible, made visible. So, um, I think I have got everything out, although I just completely blew my plan for, for saying it. But it, it helps me every time I tell this story. And thank you. Thank you, Susan. Um, there was a message to you. Um, there is? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, there was a message to you from Ashetti. They He said that if um, he had said he had posted that if you're in LA that there's a group that called the LA Tenants Union that may be able to help you. I don't know what area you're in LA. Are you still on Skid Row, babe? Or no? No. I you know I'm living uh in South Park, but it's not about okay. the area. Uh you okay. know, because uh I hate to say this, but I actually this this happened to me in another city in another state. Okay. 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 The reason I was just asking because they 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 do locals, um, and we're starting one. We're starting an LA tenants union in downtown Skid Row. Mm -hmm. So if you want more information, hit me up. Anyone else have any questions or comments for our beautiful panelists? Going once, going twice. Okay, that's that means no. Well, thank you. Can we give a round of applause for them? Show them some love. Show Marietta some love for, for putting this together without me. I'm so sorry. Like that fucking vaccine got me. Um um, we just want you to know, please do what you need to do for yourselves. I'm get, I'm planning to get drunk tonight, real talk. Um, <laughs> do what y'all need to do for yourselves. Please self-care. Um, any announcements? Do I have any announcements, actually? Nope, no announcements. Just the next, next Tuesday is the Warren Youth uh, uh, webinar which will be at six o'clock right here second tuesday of the month 
sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm telling you, I'm ADD. Y'all know this. Okay. Um, and yeah. So come yeah. back. Same May time. I say something? Uh, Hamid, do you have my telephone number? Shella, you need to give me a call because I need to talk to you about the tenants unit because uh, okay. tenants, whatever, uh, tenants union. Um, you know, I have been to so many associations and done so much uh, work on this. Uh, I did a bad presentation tonight, but um, I have a lot written on this uh, and I just didn't present it very well. But uh, this has been through many agencies, the county, the city, and uh, uh, the LAPD. So um, there is a whole lot of underground here that I didn't bring forth and didn't even present very well here. But this helps me because I'm trying to set up a hearing on this. So I'm trying to um, present it and start seeing how people react to this situation. So, Hamid, can you give Chella my number? Yeah, I'll get it Dear. from him at the end. Okay, thank you, Susan. Yeah, later, um, you know, not now, not on, not publicly. Okay, thank you. Um, yes, 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 we can, Mariana. Um, thank everyone for being here. Um, we were about to end. Does anybody have anything else to say? Just thank you so much to Rumba and Umi, Chela and Hamid, um, everybody in the Gender and Sexuality Committee and all of you present here today. Thank you, really appreciate yeah, it. And I'm supposed to open it, this up with Call Me By Your Name by uh, Antro by uh, Little Nas X. Well, we did it. We'll Ooh, do it nice. next month. Yes. We will do it next time on our gender and sexuality one. So stay tuned for that one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. Love y'all. Have a good night. Thank you for joining. Good night. Peace and power. <sighs> bye. Want to say bye? Bye bye. Bye. Baba, can I talk to you for bye. a second? Bye, Machete. Good to see you. I am. I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, oh, darn. Mariela left. Oh, and being around left. Okay. Um, so I, I asked a question about, um, so Cat911 wants us to, wants to see if they could partner with us. And like, what, I mean, I don't, we're still not sure what that would look like. Um, may, should I write an email to all of us in the coordinating team and see how we feel? Can you hear me? Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, you know, um, we've had some uh, uh, stuff that came up in Long Beach around CAT 911, and there's also some underlying issues that people have raised. So I think it'll be good to have that conversation and to see what kind of, <clears throat> you know, what that could look like, just, you know, just uh, the conceptually and in practice and, you know, uh, how it plays out, um, you know, so, so I think, yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah. yeah. Um, sorry about my facilitating skills in the end. That was a little... Uh, it's all good. It's all good. Sounds good. Okay. All righty. Bye. See you later. Bye-bye.